All right, I'll see you idiots tomorrow. Bye bye. Man, that was a cool stream. You know, Stormblood wasn't that bad at the end. It actually worked out pretty well. Now, ah. now I have you. <clears throat> Stay with me. Throw wide the gates that we may pass. Welcome to the Ocula, my private study. We can speak here without fear of being overheard. I have much to explain, but the truths which I must touch upon in doing so... Would Where am I? Who are you? Who are you? This world. Pray keep that who are you? Now, I am sure you are desperate to know the fate of your fellow Scions. Bro, who are you? Is that the Crystal Tower? You steal that? Their arrival, however, was not soul? as recent as you may imagine. Bro. Yeah, but who are you? Yeah, I'll kill everybody. What? Who are you, though? Hello? Who are you? As you may have surmised, Why your hands however, blue? our efforts met with little What's your name, success, though? And What's your name? The orbit abandoned the What's your name? Once Uriange shared with us the vision May. of witness. Shadowbringers, oh man, the prelude to this, all this setup, it just had me scratching my head every step of the way, and that was by design. And Shadowbringers takes us in a different way, story wise, a better way. Everything previously had wrapped up so nicely and nicely, and we knew where we were going. In A Realm Reborn, they set it up in a nice little package that we were being exiled to Ishgard. And the questions I had going into Heaven's Ward were when are we going to deal with Uriange? When are we going to deal with Raban? And when it comes to moving into Stormblood, it's like, right, we've got it all set up. The Dragon Song War is done. We're all happy and going in. Shadowbringers, on the other hand, begins with those painful headaches and our allies are like dropping and falling into a soulless slumber. There's whispers from beyond the void telling us to throw wide the gates. I then watched the expansion cinematic and that made it so much worse. The mystery just kept growing. Why are we on the moon? Why is Matoya young now? Why is Minfilia young? I thought, honestly, we were going into a time traveling expansion. I started thinking about like Wallace of Draenor and I honestly cannot believe or even imagine what it must have been like for the people who saw that trailer and then had to wait months and months speculating digging through every frame to find out what was going on and several people did work out things that i obviously didn't see within the minutes i got to see it but my head was spinning coming into this what sayest thou master matoya we may accept this fate or defy it but we cannot deny it Deny? I am not wont to run from my troubles. I'm not going anywhere. I promise you, Minfilia. So we arrive here in the first. Not that we know that's what it is, and it all looks so alien. It's the most alien landscape I think I've ever walked in. But there, in the distance, we see it. The Crystal Tower little bit familiarity coming into it and we'd start to learn as we approach this giant greenhouse the crystarium that this planet has been devastated i love this idea for many expansions you think in mmos of adding a whole new planet to it but you can't it's not realistic even the beginning of the games is not an entire planet but they're very large and when you add a whole planet you have these expectations of how big it should be so they countered this very cleverly by saying, well, actually, like most of the planet has been utterly destroyed. So you instantly dismiss it. And at the same time, it also gave me the idea of the scale of devastation that we were dealing with on the first. The next thing that caught my eye, of course, was that it's been destroyed by the light. So during the Warriors of Darkness encounter that we'd had in the past, I was thinking to myself, this is lame. Honestly, the Warriors of Darkness and the Warriors of Light and the Light should be the good, but this is the beginning of instilling in you just how important balance is in the Final Fantasy XIV universe. Now we understand that the light is just as dangerous as the dark. So apparently it's time to find the Scions. We get told straight away that they're fine. So I chose Alize first in Armorang. 
And, well, Holric and Tasleen. <clears throat> now, as I had the choice of which Scion to find first, I'm really, really glad I chose Alice. I have such a love of the dark and macabre storytelling. Usually, the darker, the better for me. Immediately, I'm presented with the vegetative Holric, and very quickly, the entire weight of Shadowbringers and this new world just landed on me. The loving and caring Tesleen, having already lost her mother to the light's corruption, now faces the unenviable and soul-crushing duty to hope for the hopeless, care for the doomed, and ultimately make that awful decision to hasten their deaths in their final days before they become sin eaters themselves. And if that wasn't dark enough, we then get to come back and see Tesleen. Tesseline is a character that is thoroughly likable. There's no way you can dislike Tesseline. Somebody who's passed and the trials that she'd had with her mother had driven her to become this most caring and loving of people. And there she is, out in the open world, there to defend Holric. And what do we see but the most horrifying scene I have seen in Final Fantasy XIV. Yeah, I mean, ripped straight out of Bloodborne. It was pure horror. Now, you might notice this this smile that's on my face. And that's because I, I love this kind of stuff. I really did. As much as I was unprepared, and apparently this is the censored version of this, it blew me away. And also, I'm in. I'm so in. And as this moment broke down, and I'm sure many of you have had this moment as well, all I heard around me were echoes. Welcome to Shadowbringers. Jesus Christ! awful that was awful so our stage is set our next up is alfie and we're off to yulmo um it's it's it almost started cliche paradise it's just there so easy so free so simple lord vothry is a saint he can control the sin eaters everything you need is in there and after tesseline all we knew is that it was going to be fucked. Absolutely fucked. <laughs> the shanty town outside was great. We first see exactly what I expected to see in this environment with the promise of paradise waiting right there, is that the people are doing anything, anything they can to get inside those doors. They're parading themselves, they're lowering, they're denigrating themselves for the jesters who are promising everything if you just do as we say and then feeding them with the wondrous meal. Now, we're not stupid. Right, we're not stupid people, and we obviously buy the reference straight away. This is something like Soylent Green. There's something very wrong with this if they're providing this food, and it's all very sinister. We know something's wrong. We know that as players, but, and this is where Squeenix writing, in these two segments here, Squeenix's writing was superb. First of all, when you go actually into the purgatory area just outside, if you talk to everybody, you don't have to do this for the quest, but if you go and talk to everybody, you find out those people who are living off the scraps of Yulmore do not want to go inside the city. What your expectation is, is of course, everybody wants to go in and they're all just like sheep going in, but no, they don't let you be the smart one and their characters be the idiots. You meet people who are like, I ain't going in there. People who go in there don't come out. There's something wrong with that. I'm happy here. I feed off their scraps. I'm alive. I'm okay. And I don't have to deal with whatever horrors lurk inside there. And give us that, that moment to go, okay, the characters are aware of what's going on here as well. And then they do some other clever writing. Squeaks is so good at drawing back to maybe little jokes they made in the past and little references to characters. And Alphano's artwork and his little art skills, which was a big joke in the past, comes in clutch here. So much better than what we'd seen in Stormblood, which is random MacGuffin falls from the sky and allows us entry into the city. I never expected us to struggle to get into Yulmore, but actually relying on Alfie's artwork and that old joke, genius. Absolutely genius, because it made total sense. And any player who'd been paying attention to that stuff was like, 
well, yeah, of course, Alf, Alfie can do this. He can make it work. And I loved his awkwardness here. They developed his character in a good way. Alfie has clearly never spent any time at an all boys school because the shower scene, his awkwardness, his, you can already picture him kind of giving it all this, trying to sidle in and he's getting the soap to try and pick it up. It's exactly what I'd seen because I went to an all boys school and I've seen the lads behaving like that on their first couple of showers. So to have that happen, magnificent. It was so accurate. And of course the levity. We know the horrors await us. We know it's coming. But then we meet two of the most lovable characters in the entirety of Shadowbringers. The Chai's, especially Lady Chai, is and will always be something to bring a smile to my face. Naive as they are about their situation, they're good-hearted through and through. They're caught up in an unwinnable situation of just waiting for their death. In Yulmo's hedonist society, they just want simple, wholesome pleasures, and I firmly believe they couldn't see what was behind the curtain of Yulmo, and I absolutely love them both. But after seeing Vothri, I mean... <laughs> Vortri's a fantastic character. With Edward Dogliani, who you might also recognize as the Lord of Bones from Game of Thrones, voicing that for unforgettable character. So it got even worse when, lo and behold, Vortri does have control over Sin Eaters. Or at least a truce. I couldn't help but notice the little baby face that was popping out from his, you know, his juicy, juicy chest. And when he started raging and moving across the floor, I was in shock but I was like also smiling. It's just so badass. Just as with everything through the full secrets of Yulmo beyond them waiting for ascension. The real details will have to wait. What you need is a mirror, not a painting. It will capture the horror I see before me far better than I ever could. Did, did that little worm just insult me? their minds! Uh, uh, torment them! Torture them! Uh, and tear out their hearts! All right, there's something we need to clear up because it was easily the most controversial thing that happened to me when playing through Shadowbringers where people got really, really mad at me. And I still stand by what I said, but I'll explain it to you now. Is a big thing in Shadowbringers is the intentional obfuscation of information. And the reason they do that is pretty simple. They want these big, heavy moments later. They don't want us to want to lift the curtain straight away. They want you to have that surprise. They want you to have the mate. And I totally, totally get that. And this thing I'm about to tell you about, I didn't even dislike. It just wasn't a problem for me, really. Obviously, one of the big ones is the real identity of the Crystal Exarch and his exact motives. And we know that something is a little bit fishy with Uriangé's tale. We know, and we also know in our past, Uriangé isn't, you know, he's not the most truthful of persons when he thinks there's a greater cause and a greater threat or some good reason in his justification for keeping information from you. And it was driving me mad in a fun way. And that's what they wanted. They wanted you guessing. Grahatia would be the obvious choice. The Crystal Tower's here. Who's locked in the Crystal Tower? That makes total sense that it would be Grahatia. But because they delay it, he's, I even, at some point, believed it might have been young Louis Wa, uh, because of the time travel stuff and all that. And I had all these ideas going through my heads, and they keep it away from you. Ultimately, when the reveal came, yes, it carried a lot of weight. In fact, the bit that carried the most weight for me was seeing how long Grahatia and Sid and all of them had toiled through the calamity in order to get here. That was what carried the weight for me. The reveal of him, and maybe he would have to kill himself, we've dealt with that in the past. We've dealt with that with Papalimo, we've dealt with that with Moonbreedo. It's actually kind of a, a part of being a scion is to deal with that. And I felt like I was taking crazy pills that nobody was bringing this up. Why are we not pushing this guy who literally ripped our souls off the planet all the way here and we're not pushing to find out who he is. And thankfully, Yishtola, <sighs> Yishtola actually brought it up. Because the, the, obviously the writers knew the players are going to be questioning why we're not pushing this. And I was so happy when Yishtola was like, there's something sus going on. Something's not right. And I want to find out what it is. And I was so thankful that we at least had that moment of levity. The reason I didn't dislike it, it was just something I commented on, which I honestly threw a lot of people into rage, is I had fun guessing 
the whole way. That was part of the design of Shadowbringers. And at one point, I'm pretty sure I saw a rock and thought, well, that must be Zodiac. Or maybe, maybe it's, you know, it's Allegans, <laughs> you know? And our boy, Uriange, is up next. And Jesus, the fairies, the Scottish fairies. Look, I don't hate them. I don't, I don't, but I shared the twins' frustration wandering through that lost woods of, ah, I don't need this right now. There's bigger things happening. I don't like it. But what I absolutely loved is they, it's, it's almost as if they made that zone to play to the strength of Ariange. Because I can almost picture these fairies getting in his face, trying to play with him, trying to toy with him. And him, dost thou know the secrets of white orosite and its magnificent tales? Dost thou know of Moonbreeder hastening the rising power of Aurasite upon us? You can see it, and the fairy's just going, sure, <laughs> yeah, on your way, and admitting that he answered all of their riddles correctly, and they're just like, just go play in the library. Please, God, we'll wait for somebody else. You're, you're fine. Go and do your own thing. It was cool. This whole zone played into his strengths, and it was finally, oh my God, it was finally the time for some answers. Kind of. We finally got a law dump. Zodiac, the history of the first, what happened here. Kind of. And raised, of course, in true Shadowbringer style, more questions to go along with it. But we did start to fill out the picture that maybe something really isn't one-sided here, which is the strength of Shadowbringers that we'll get to. We Asians know because it is our history, our story. It was we who summoned Zodiac, we natives of that sundered paradise. Having Ardbert return and sneak into my bedroom, it was a joy. It's creepy, but it was a joy. I, I like that character. I liked him a lot. Uh, when he went on his merry way, and I was really glad to see him back. His story is one of the most tragic in all of Shadowbringers, and there's a lot of tragedy in this expansion. A hundred years spent alone as a ghost. No one can hear you, no one can see you, no one can interact with you, and through all that time, you're watching the devastation of your home and everything they gave up to give you a chance at life, being controlled by Yulmore and all this kind of stuff, and the Sin Eaters murdering people, and we do get that scene as well. It was heartbreaking, his bitterness was understandable, but fuck him, because Seto, Seto, whatever you want to say, I flew into a rage. I mean, I'm not Mimi exaggerated entertainment rage. I'm a dog lover. And when Seto was explaining to us his history of Ardbert, and Ardbert is stood right next to us, and Ardbert can talk to us, through me to communicate with that sad dog, and he didn't. I swore, unironically, and not for joke's sake, Shadowbringers would be a one out of 10 if that was not resolved by the end of the expansion. And I mean it. He was a good man. He deserved to be happy. I wish I could have told him that at least. You fucking can. Do it. <sighs> Actually fucking triggered beyond all fucking belief. Actually giga triggered. Oh, Advert man, I would fucking cut your goddamn head off if I could. You weren't already fucking dead. I will literally find a way to resurrect you and kill you again, you fucking asshole. We should talk about Thancred and Minfilia. Um, I want to do... I, I feel I owe it to them. I know it sounds weird, but I feel I owe it to give them their own video. Thancred, I have... I'm really sorry. Don't get... Wait, just wait to the end of my sentence, okay? I have disliked Thancred ever since I saw him in A Realm Reborn. I have not like that character. I have consistently rated him in when people have asked me to do tier lists of the sounds as one of the lowest. Uh, for good reason, in my mind, actually. He turns up late, he takes credit sometimes when he didn't do anything. Uh, he had a few redeeming moments, but not many. And I just didn't like that character. And Shadowbringers taught me to love Dancred a lot, like a huge amount. And the storyline between him and Minfilia, Reen, it deserves its own commentary that I can't squeeze into this one, honestly. 
So like get subscribed for that one because it's something I really want to talk about after the amount, probably as a sort of redemption for the amount of hate I've given fan cred over the last few months. So yeah, you'll see. Finally, it was time to see Ishtola. I was so upset when they benched Itola and Stormblood. Alizé and Ishtola have been consistently my favorite Scions. I have rated them top tier for the entire time. And when she was missing from Stormblood, I was genuinely really, really pissed off. So loads of you, and apparently I should have as well, because you see her full face, worked out that Master Matoya in that trailer was in fact Ishtola. I didn't. I was really excited to see a young Matoya, but we didn't get that and that's okay. But what we did find is that Ishtola, that respect those two have, despite the animosity, the loving animosity they have between each other, was paid in full. I have to say though, every single zone in Shadowbringers was fantastic. All of them, for me, outdid every single one of the Stormblood zones. Out of all of these stellar zones, Raktika, eh, that, that was my least enjoyable. And no, not just because of Lahi. And yes, yes, I have seen the video. The story of the Knight's Village was great. Such a wonderful people in the middle of this calamity that has befallen them. I shared in Ishtola's compassion for them as they just went about their lives dealing with this situation. Ishtola, she's grown as a character. She's become a leader. And with everything that has happened to her, also a little harsher and less subtle in her dealings with others. In many ways, not only taking on the name of Matoya, but becoming her. It's understandable, but she's no longer the Ishtola that I knew from A Realm Reborn. She's now pushing the Scions when she feels it's needed, regardless of their feelings. She's upsetting them if she has to. She's openly frustrated with the mundane quests people ask of them to gain trust, and our little son is becoming a shining star. The thing that made it less enjoyable for me was simply the, the bunny zone stuff. And that's not because it was bad. It was fine. It was okay. Sure, but ironically, it lacked that darkness and light that I had come to expect from Shadowbringers so far. It just felt normal, bland by comparison. Although it was fine, it was fun in its own right. Would you describe it to me, Marie Angers? Paint for me a picture with your words. A sea of shimmering stars. Diamonds strewn across a raven gown, boundless and beautiful. It is an exquisite sight, not unlike that of the source. Calm and gentle and forgiving. I can see it. For however deep the void or wide the expanse, there is no shore so distant as to be beyond the reach of light. And with that, our gang is assembled. The pieces are in place to go on this journey. And I, with this Shadowbringers is so big. It's so much bigger than Stormblood. It's so much bigger than Heaven's Ward. It's so much bigger than A Realm Reborn. It's so much bigger than even something I'd cover in a legacy video. I managed to fit the Burning Crusade into like half an hour. Uh, Shadowbringers needs more than that, which is why I've, I've done the heroes to start us off with. Where our heroes were, how I felt about meeting them, everything from Ardbert to Seto to finding the Scions again after losing them consistently throughout Stormblood. And our next stop is gonna be a big one, guys. It's gonna be Emmett Selk. <sighs> it's gonna be Emmett Selk. Uh, we'll obviously talk a little bit about Ranjit. I'm not sure what we're gonna do about the rest of the Asians because they're the whole story unto themselves that needs its own tale to be told about how I felt about it. Because there's no secret, a lot of people know this, uh, especially if you watch the live stream, is five times Shadowbringers brought me to tears. So I hope you understand why I want to spend some time and talk about this. So make sure you get subscribed and chill out for that. It might be a little delayed purely because if you're watching this on the day this comes out, I am flying to Hamburg on Monday. Uh, I'm going to be there for two weeks for the race to World First for World of Warcraft. Uh, so doing our big productions will have to wait a little bit. But stay tuned, it's going to be there. But I'm also playing Endwalker on Tuesday, so good things are happening. I'll see you again, guys. Bye-bye. By the way, display code is down below. Display. It's funny, I don't know why I'm, I'm seeing this now. I'll just notice it through the viewfinder. It's the pickle next to you. That cake looks like a John Ray penis. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Oh, it does a little bit. Yeah. So <clears throat> next we're on to the Yule War segment. Lord, four, three. <laughs>
He was so funny, that character. I mean, I'm putting that in at the end. <laughs> I have more than words for you, my lady. I like to watch. Nothing more. 